that when you play against UNLV, your guards have to help on the glass. They have to block out and pursue the ball. Why? The running Rebels will shoot a lot of three-point shots. When they miss, they bounce out very long. Skip pass, Bryant. No look up to Brown. Brown, great behind the back pass. Threw right behind his head to Luke Nevin. Well, great may be understating that pass a little bit. Phenomenal. So it's a five-point game now. Curtis Terry trying to change that, and he does. UNLV, the leaders in consecutive three-pointers in the nation, 698 straight games with a three-pointer. If they get to the second round of the conference tournament and continue to hit threes, they'll be the first team in the history of college basketball to get to 700 straight games. Dercha with 10 seconds on the timer. Neville, the putback. Can't teach size. <laughs> Along with Tim McCormick, Tim Neverett here at the Thomas and Mack Center. Will return to the Thomas and Mack Center after this timeout. 7.09 to go in the first half of play as Luke Neville starting to become a force on the inside for the running Utes and on the outside for UNLV. Curtis Terry starting to heat up. 15 lead for UNLV over Utah. And you know what? There's nothing like tournament time where every play is more critical, every mistake more magnified when you leave it all on the floor or leave it all behind. It's on the Mountain West Championships start next Saturday, 4 Eastern on Versus. The automatic NCAA tournament bids on the line. And we'll bring it to you right here from the Thomas and Mack Center. A couple of trips to Las Vegas in two weeks doesn't hurt your feelings, does it? Not one <laughs> bit. And the other thing I really like is the contributions of Corey Bailey. Three out of three from the field. He has been their best player so far. He is the subject of our eHarmony player profile. Corey Bailey, 62 games, 50% shooting from the field. You know, watching the post matchup, it's like if I were posting you up inside. <laughs> Darter does a really nice job with leverage. And there's Brown getting to the basket. And for those who don't know, I'm only two or three inches shorter than you. <laughs> yeah, when we're sitting down. Curtis Terry with the basketball. Now a four-point game. This is the closest the Utes have been. UNLV, remember, got out to a 7-0 run. Neville gets the rebound and a chance now to close for the Utes. Yeah, wouldn't you think that Lon Kruger feels pretty good right now? They're up four, and Darger and Wink Adams have not scored a basket yet. They have no points. Highly unusual. You think about Wink Adams averaging 16 points a game, and Joe Darger nearly 12 points a game. There's the hook, and it's good for Luke Neville. Utah now on a 6-0 run. And Neville's been a big part of that. He's in double figures with 10 points, the 69th time in his career he's had a double-digit scoring game, the 25th time this year. But look at the matchup on the wing. Rutledge against Neville. Here's Dagger with the dagger. Is that the Dagger dagger? That's it. His nickname is the Snow Dagger. <laughs> How come I never had a cool nickname like that? Because you weren't a three-point shooter. Sean Green is. He missed that one, though. And the loose ball taken back by Luca Dercha. Five-point lead for UNLV. 5.20 to play. First half. Dercha lines one up. He's got it. Luca Dercha cuts it to a two-point game. You've got some three-point specialists on the Utah team that could make a difference. Johnny Bryan, one of them. Lawrence Bora, another one who shoots close to 46% from behind the arc. Rutledge has it tipped away, and Neville is fouled by Rutledge. Uh, Tim, you made a really good point about Utah's ability to shoot the ball. I look at the Mountain West as a shooter's league, and you could take BYU, New Mexico, Utah for sure. 
and put those three up against any top 20 team in all of college basketball in terms of guys being able to knock down shots, especially at the four and five position. It's probably the one thing that the Mountain West does better than anything else is shoot the ball. Luka Dercha guilty of the offensive foul and the Utes turn it over. Jim Boylan trying to litigate. Yeah, watch the left hand, the discard, not a big deal, but yeah, it, it was clearly using your arm for advantage. First foul on Dercha. Fourth team foul for Utah. Five team fouls on UNLV as we're just under four and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Curtis Terry has changed his shoes, by the way. Didn't help him with the shot. He started with solid black shoes, and now he's gone back to gray shoes. Don't, don't they do that in the NFL sometimes, depending on turf conditions? Yeah. I don't think they have that problem here. An offensive foul on Luke Neville. That's his second personal foul. And the second time down the floor, Utah has turned it over in that fashion. Well, Neville is a lot bigger, but Darger has a leverage advantage and a quickness advantage. That was the easiest call that the referees will have all night, all day. And Neville will sit with two fouls. Kim Tilly with one replaces him. Tiller, the sophomore from Consumer in France. Missed some time due to injury, but has been very effective since getting into the Utes lineup. And a turnover this time for Corey Bailey. A two-point game, UNLV in front of Utah in Las Vegas. 3.52 left in the first half. Two-point lead for UNLV. Well, that's not Curtis Terry changing his shoes, but he, he did so sometime <laughs> during one of the earlier timeouts. Utah talking things over as Luke Neville has brought them back into this game. 12 points, four rebounds. Well, nice footwork inside, and I like the commitment to get the ball into their big guy. He has a monumental size advantage. 12 early points. However, he's been plagued with foul trouble this year. That's the reason that they brought him off the bench. Now he's going to sit down for the rest of the half. And who is going to be able to take over for Utah? But one other thing that I, I want to note is that in the first meeting, Lawrence Bora did a great job defensively against Wink Adams. So far, he's pitching a shutout in this contest. So far, Wink is 0 for 1. And he was similarly successful in their first meeting on the 6th of February. Here's Colin Brown. Trying to shoot for the lead and the rebound. Corey Bailey, a foul is going to be called on Utah. Just more on that point real quick. Wink Adams was 0 for 4 from three-point range against Utah last time. And 3 of 11 from the field. Board did an exceptional job on him defensively. Yeah, take a look. You're not going to see a foul up top. But it's down below where he hit his leg and put a little top action on him. Got him spinning. Here comes Kipke. Lost the handle on the ball. And a foul is going to be called on Wink Adams. That's his first of the game. Yeah, a little bit of a frustration foul by Wink Adams, and he's used to playing fast and free, shoot whenever he wants, but today he's going to have to have a lot of poise because he's not going to get those open looks with Bora doing his lockup. Johnny Bryant checks back in for Bora right now, so they might give up a little bit in defense, but they get a little more in offense. Yeah, and let's keep a close eye on Wink. Bryant takes the inbound pass from Brown. Next foul will put either team in the bonus. Tilly to the basket. Tilly, the offensive board, a foul on the way up. Strong play underneath by Kim Tilly of Utah. Rene Rougeau commits the personal foul. In their last outing against Colorado State, Kim Tilly was very strong indeed. He only played 18 minutes, but had 13 points. He's a superb big athlete, very solid on the defensive end. And Tim, you'd have to say, as only a sophomore, getting mentored, learning a new system, he has to be one of the bright stars of the future. I would say he's got all league potential down the road. Game is tied for the first time at 24 as Tilly 
78% free throw shooter, knocks him down. That's one thing about Utah. They've got good free throw shooting from their big men. 71% for Neville, 78% from Tilly. Yeah, both these teams, one and two in the Mountain West at the line.